Hey guys, thanks for joining me, and if you like what you see, please subscribe. Hello people, welcome to Sharp End. So I'm going to do a series on knives, which are kind of classics, and this one is the Chris Reeves and Cozy, which came out a long time ago, and Chris Reeves came from South Africa originally, now he's in Idaho, I think he came over in the 90s, and he, along with uh, Rick Henderer and uh, Sal Gesser from Spider Co. and uh, Strider, uh, back in the 90s, started coming out with high-end pocket knives using high-end tool steels with high-end engineering and stuff like that. But Chris Reeves is kind of considered the OG, and you're not really considered a knife collector if you don't have a Chris Reeves knives. Uh, and I definitely collect knives at this point, so I got one of these to test out. This is a mini. It's a plain Jane one. Uh, it doesn't have any crazy inlays or anything like that. And I gotta tell you, I definitely am impressed by this. It's got a slight hollow ground. This is the plain Jane S45, which keeps an edge surprisingly long time. Uh, S90V is probably my favorite steel as far as edge retention and usability goes. And I gotta say that uh, this uh, S45 is just screaming, screaming sharp and uh, easy to strop and everything like that. Um, I'm going to do a quick disassembly. It's going to be in high speed. And then when I take it apart, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the inside of this, how it's put together, and the bushing system and a couple other things. I've never taken one of these apart before, so that should be an adventure. Um, but uh, it looks, it, I mean, it, it's obviously really well made, and I've carried it a lot. And we're going to go to the high speed, and then I'm going to talk about some of the things that I find inside and why I like this knife so much. All right to warp speed. And we're back. Okay, so one thing that everyone always says about these tolerances, the machining tolerances on, on this are very high and things fit together very precisely. And um, that's one of the reasons why you're paying so much for this is how well everything fits together. And after taking that apart, absolutely believe them 100%. A lot of gunk and grime on here. And that's because I've been using this knife. Um... The way that the washers work, these bushings, they sit in there and they basically, they don't turn. The knife goes around them, which gives it that distinctive, uh, what people call a piston feel to when you're open it. You can't, you don't, you don't flick this knife open. You roll it open and it rolls open very, in a very controlled, uh, uh, pressure, uh, point way. Right. Um, and uh, you can see in here that the backstop pin is oversized. In fact, everything about the hardware in this is oversized. So you have a um, the uh, a, a pivot bolt here, which is giant. And I think that this is what is this? That's a T. It's one of the large T15, like literally one of the largest uh, hex bolts I've ever seen in my life. Um, and it. And it's very precise, and it's very large, too. Very, very large pivot. Um, and then the knife itself, you can take a look here. You can see it, there's actually no maker's mark on there, so it doesn't say Chris Reeves anywhere. You know it's a Chris Reeves, or you don't know it's a Chris Reeves, but it does have the 45 there, which tells you what the knife steel is. It's an interesting place to have it, because that could potentially get up a lot of gunk caught up in there, where it's laser etched in there. It hasn't really, though, although these uh, bearings are really, really grimy. Um, everything in there is very grimy. Uh, what I'm going to do is, now, there's a big debate about, you know, you can, that piston feel and open it, like it will break in naturally. And more and more, and I can even flick it open right now uh, sometimes. Um, but it's very, there's a lot of surface area there. And there's very tight tolerances. So in general, you're not uh, getting uh, you're not getting much flickability, and it's definitely not dropping shut. 
um, not like how a lot of other knives kind of that are premium kind of sell themselves. In fact, I don't think there's any Chris Reeves knives that do that. But one way that you can make it do that is by polishing the washers. There's a lot of controversy about that. The designer says, absolutely, do not do that. This is made for a way, and each uh, washer is hand-fitted or something like that. They're not really hand-fitted. Um, they're just not. Um, but, uh, or, you know, hand-sanded or whatever. Uh, I don't want to polish it, but what I am going to do is uh, is going to do, maybe some people would call this polishing. Maybe not you. I don't know. I'm not going to call it polishing. I am going to take it, uh, these bearings, and uh, what I'm going to do, or these washers, sorry, not these bearings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it off, and uh, then I'm going to take it with my rough side of my strop, and I'm going to run the part that runs against the blade. Uh, in a, like a figure eight, about eight times, six times. And then I'm going to put it back together again. So that will uh, go, you know, any kind of rough spots that might have formed will go away there. This is also, I notice now that I'm cleaning this off, it's very, very dry as if there was basically zero lubricant on this at all. Um, which I don't know if that's done on purpose or not. Maybe you're not supposed to on these Chris Reed knives. I'm, I don't know. It's interesting to me, too, how these bushings uh, are cut out. I don't know why you would do that. Uh, it's definitely not to save on weight. I mean, you would be saving such a minimal amount. Maybe it's less surface area. Uh, but definitely this knife was dirty inside, so I'm glad I'm cleaning it out. Definitely carried it here and there a lot since I got it. Originally, I thought I would just get it, have it for a week or two, not mess around with it too much, just see what it was about, and then quickly sell it and pass it on. But I actually was so impressed with how sharp it is, how classy it is, and what an easy carry it is, that I've gone ahead and kept it, even though I'm usually a guy who likes full-size knives more. Um, I vaguely been looking for a full-size knife but uh from chris reeves but i think that if i do get one i'm going to really wait until i get the one that i really want which is probably going to be an umen zon but those zons are really 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 hard to get so now i'm just going to take my paddle strap here and on the inside part the part that's next to the blade i'm going to take and i am going to just Go around here, that's four, five, six, seven, eight. And just do a very light little polish on that. Very easy to tell which side is against the blade because you can actually see some of the blade marks there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So not a complete polish at all, but does flatten it out just a little bit. And I think with the addition with a little bit of oil, it'll loosen up the action just ever so slightly more. Um, and a lot of people on the forum say, you know, you don't need to do this. You just need to use it and carry it every day. Well, I got to tell you, I got a lot of knives that I got to carry every day. Um, and so, um, you know, carrying this for 100 days in a row isn't going to happen for a couple of years. Uh, so I need to go ahead and uh, speed up the process just a little bit. Um, and now I'm going to try to put it back together again with a little bit of oil. I will not need to worry about... So this stop pivot here is actually keeping the bushing from turning. So the bushing or the washer doesn't actually need oil on the side that goes against the scale. I just maybe need a little bit over here. And instead of putting it here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna probably just put some a little drop, one drop on the, the blade itself on either side and in the pivot. All right, I'm gonna put this back together and go to warp speed and give you guys a couple of last final comments and thoughts about the Chris Reeves and whether or not it's worth the money. All right, going to warp speed. <laughs>
Okay, and we're back. I'm just fiddling with the tension on the pivot right now. Um, so, my final thoughts. Everyone says the machining on this is incredible. It took me a little while to get it to snap all back together. When it did snap back together, it really, you know, went back together with a little pop as if all the pieces were perfectly aligned. There's no give or take on this. This is a knife that, uh, even though it costs a lot of money, you know that you're that you're getting what you pay for. Uh, when you over tighten the pivot, it actually um, stops, uh, you know, coming out from from coming out because the bush the bearings aren't turning at all. Uh, it, it's very finicky there. Having said that, though, um, it's almost perfectly centered right off the bat without even trying. That hydraulic feeling is still there. The machining is evident in a lot of different things. Like the jimping back here, I really appreciate because it's got this pattern to it where it's got a double or a, like a deeper one every fourth or uh, every third. Uh, and it just gives it a nice, cool appearance. And it's got this larger little jimp right here. Um, and I just, I don't know, I like that. And I really like how the spine of the blade is really well blind. I mean, obviously, you're never going to throw any sparks with this, but you would never want to throw a spark with this. But... It's just a really classic, classy look, and almost no knives have that really well-rounded, smoothed-off spine like that. The very little shallow hollow grind in here is just awesome. And the little titanium studs here that are these, this blue color, it's just really cool, too. This is obviously the plain Jane one. There are lots of different kinds of this. The frame lock itself is lock rock solid and like i said it just feels like you know as much as i went in there and i changed uh just kind of polished those washers it actually feels this is going to sound crazy it actually feels more do i have uh it actually feels more locks lock tight than when i started which is to me crazy like i feel i felt like i would feel a little bit more or a little less of that hydraulic action, but it's just not true. And basically the pivot's loose right now. Like it's just running, it just fit together so well that that's just the way that it runs. Um, so I guess they're right. You just have to hold, you know, open it up a bunch and, or really polish those uh, bushings to take down a micron or two on those. I don't think it's worth it because it just feels... Like that hydraulic action, I mean, obviously it's not it's not flicking open real well, but that hydraulic action uh, does feel cool. So, you know, you just roll it open and that's what you happen. And then you have a rock solid knife in your hand. The machining here, all of these curves are compound, not your basic, uh, not your basic you know, even this back part right here, it swoops down and up over the pin and then goes down again. All the machining on this is so extraordinarily precise. You've got this almost like arrowhead right here. Nice sharpening choil here. I've only ever stropped this so far. I think S45, I probably won't ever need to really sharpen it that much. Maybe you know, once years down the road, I might, but Continual stropping, I think, will keep this sharp for a, lot, a long time. The ergo's on this because of that micro machining and that complex curves that they have. It just feels so good in the hand. You don't even need this because my finger actually rests on here. Really curious to have a full size one of these instead of the small. The lockup on here is about 50%. And it is dead center right now. And uh, yeah, no blade play. Uh, yeah, you know, so Chris Reeves is what they, it, it, it is worth, it is worth it. It is worth it. Um, you know, like there are a lot of cool things coming out. This still sets a standard and a bar for knives, which you cannot be dismissed. Um, you just cannot dismiss it. The same way that you can't dismiss uh, a Hinderer XM18, you cannot dismiss a Chris Reeves. Uh, or a Strider. I know this is the Protec Strider version, but I'm just putting it out there to show along with it. These blade shapes here are the classic blade shapes of the last four centuries in pocket knives. 
Thanks so much for joining me, guys. If you like this, I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe and leave a comment. Comments really help out this channel a lot. You can also join this channel for $3 a month by following the link down below for Patreon, and I would love you forever, and you will probably win a knife pretty soon. So thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time on Sharp Ends. Bye-bye now.